Well, Netflix could be throwing its hat in the sports ring as it reportedly undergoes talks to live stream a celebrity golf tournament this fall. That's at least according to the Wall Street Journal. So what does this mean for Netflix's sports strategy and how does it hold up against the competition? Let's bring in our very own Ali Canal with the details. And Ali, we have heard for years from Netflix that they don't want to get into the live mm -hmm. sports game. It is about the content around the sports discussion. Is that going to shift? Exactly. Well, they are experimenting with different ways to bring sports to their audiences, but it's a bit untraditional compared to some of those competitors. We've seen the tech giants like Apple, Amazon, Google really target those big partnerships with the MLB, MLS, NFL. But Netflix is doing something different. They're exploring sports documentaries with F1 in full swing. Now with this live celebrity golf tournament, they're going to bring some of those characters into that. So they're really creating these franchises around sports. So I spoke to an expert on this, John Christian. He leads an entertainment consulting company. I asked him, is this sustainable? Can Netflix not go after those spicy, uh, not spicy, but I thought you could argue maybe pricey, I should say, <laughs> uh, sports, <Spicy> and <laughs> sports packages, which we've seen, they're very, very expensive, which is one of the main reasons Netflix has stayed away from that. And he said right now, they're just trying to focus on the technology, right? Making sure that they can get live sports tech right because we know with the live love is blind reunion that had some hiccups and if you're a sports fan if you're watching a game and something goes wrong you're not going to be too happy about it so that's priority number one he said down the line they might have to be forced to explore some of those pricier packages with those major league teams or maybe even on the collegiate level with the ncaa but right now it's really all about creating these connections right because sports fans they really last for frontier of the cord cutters. So there's a lot of untapped potential and a lot of opportunity to go after some of these games. But it's also just more and more like cable. It's kind yeah, of, that's what's, it's like, what's, what's the point? I don't know. It's just silly. Anyway, this is, <laughs> you know what I well, mean? No, I was trying to think of your argument on it's more like cable. I guess, I mean, the more stuff they offer, then like, isn't it just like getting the cable bundle again? You still, it's still not the same. The it's cost, still cheaper. The cost. It's still cheaper. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Unless cost you get is all of the slowly different... creeping up, though, it depending is. on how many services you have. So exactly. It's, so it's, I guess, I guess, what I'm saying is, what's the differentiation and the advantage at a certain point for? I don't know. The, right. The propositions just changes. And at a certain point, I do think that's why we're going to see eventual consolidation with mm. all of these services yeah. and all of these offerings because people aren't going to go to all these different places just to access different types of games or different types of offerings. So that's something I think that we're going to see more of down the line. Yeah. Um, meantime, we've seen well, Netflix shares rallying. They're up again oh, yes. today. And Wall Street has been quite bullish lately. Oh, yeah, very bullish. I mean, the stock is up 50% year to date, more than 140% on the year. Investors are bullish. Analysts are bullish. The latest being Cowan, John Blackledge, boosting his price target to 500 bucks a share this morning, up from the prior 440. Also reiterated his outperform rating. Now, he joins a slew of other banks boosting their price targets in recent days, including Pivotal Research, Wells Fargo, JPM, Bank of America. Pivotal Research currently has the highest price target on the street at 535 bucks a share but they're all pretty much in this 470 to 500 range which suggests a lot of upside based on current levels and you were just seeing on your screen 30 buys there 24 holds and four sells and this really all has to do with the ad supported yes. tier along with the crackdown on password sharing those are two big revenue and initiatives and we're talking sports which netflix has said it doesn't necessarily want to pursue but when we talk about ads and the crackdown on password sharing they've also said in the past that they weren't going to do that they said they'll never be ads on F netflix now we have the ad tier they said we'll never go after your passwords now we're all feeling the impact of that so that could be something that eventually based on the competition out there they could be forced to do it is about those additional revenue drivers at least from an investor perspective that mm -hmm. we see. yeah all we'll about see. the money baby yes <laughs> all right thanks sally